Good morning, everyone. Uh, I, I will be brief as to make up for some uh, time. Uh, I talked to Randy and Greg, that's one of my strengths. Thanks. Uh, briefly, let's talk about tax exempt financing for a 501c3s in Chautauqua County. Uh, the history is that civic facilities legislation was first enacted in 1997 and it was extended every two years by the New York State Legislature. The current law expired January 31st, 2008, and the uh, legislature has been unable to come to agreement on renewing the 501c3 civic facilities legislation. What that means is uh, examples of uh, some organizations that took advantage of this in the past were JCC for their new dormitories, which was the last bond we were issued, that we had issued, uh, WCA Hospital, United Cerebral Palsy of Western New York, Lutheran Social Services, the Resource Center, Gary Holmes, uh, the Jamestown Savings Bank, I Serena, and on and on. So with the legislation expired, there was no longer the ability for 501c3s to uh, access the tax exempt market. Uh, today we have a little different scenario. On November 18th, the Chautauqua County Legislature approved the proposed Certificate of Incorporation and consenting to the formation of the Chautauqua County Capital Resource Corporation. This corporation can now issue tax exempt debt in Chautauqua County for 501c3s. Uh, these bonds and notes uh, will, and other obligations of the corporation will not be a debt of the state or of New York or Chautauqua County. Uh, we are in a favorable time to issue tax exempt debt for a variety of reasons. Uh, the first reason being that these bonds now can be bought directly by a bank. Where they could have been bought by the banks before, there were provisions that made this not practical for the bank. And in your handouts, when you get time to look at that, you'll see a letter from the Bond Councils of America, uh, bond lawyers, that talk about why this is now a good thing. In the uh, Reinvestment Act, they loosened the regulations for the banks, allowing them to deduct some interest for these bonds that were not allowed before. So direct placements with the bank uh, can be very cost effective for 501c3s. We are, uh, as I said, this corporation has been formed and we can do these bonds. The other thing that makes these bonds uh, interesting is right now interest rates are very, very low. Uh, this is a great time for 501c3s to take a look at all of their debt. Uh, for example, if a 501c3 had an existing bond and they had some bank loans and they wanted to uh, consolidate all that, if the debt that they currently have was at, eligible at the time for tax-exempt financing, it can be refinanced as tax-exempt financing. And again, by going to the bank and directly placing it with a bank, the issuance costs are really low. Uh, in the letter that I've attached to this, uh, they're talking today about three or four percentage points cheaper for tax exempt debt than for uh, regular bank financing uh, because of uh, some of the other issues involved with the banks and collateral. So if everyone would just look into their packet, I just want to show you one simple drawing. Uh, it's in my tab. Uh, there's a drawing that's called Typical Bank Place Bonds. It's very simple. Uh, you have the, the, for the uh, private user, you have the project, you have the not for profit borrower, the government issuer, such as the IDA, and the lender purchase. So it's a very simple, uh, cost effective way to issue these bonds. If the banks don't buy the bond, then you have to go to the private market. And here's an example of what the private market looks like if you go to the next slide. Uh, there are a lot of people involved when the bond goes with an underwriter and, and has to be sold. Uh, it, it is a little more costly, as you can see, with all those people involved. But when you get up to issues over 10 to $15 million, it might pay to actually have an underwriter involved and then take this bond out to sell it. But uh, it's a great time for the banks to buy them, and I would encourage any of you that have clients in the not-for-profit section whose clients are thinking of restructuring their debt, uh, you know, to talk to the banks about buying this debt. 
And the last thing I'll mention about doing that restructuring is we see a lot of organizations that have cross-collateralization on their properties. They have firsts here, they have seconds on this. Everything's kind of intertwined. When they go to do new financing, it's a little difficult with everything that's required for, for subordination agreements. Under this method of refinancing everything, putting it under one umbrella, you can kind of free up your collateral uh, and make it very clear that you have an uh, avenue to borrow more money. So it can be not only cost effective, but it can pave the way for future developments for 501c3s. So as I said, the legislation is passed, uh, and we're ready to talk to any of your clients that are interested in refinancing or for new projects, and I would encourage you to give us a call. Uh, are there any questions on the debt? I thank you.